Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Rare Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today is the day to get my thrifts flipped. I have a stash here in my dining room where I usually do my painting and things in the wintertime because it's too cold down in my basement where I have normally my my little area where I work and I just have a bunch of stuff piling up that I need to get done so I'm just going to go around my dining room find the piles of things that need to be done and just start painting now this one was a little bit of a mistake to paint I should have sprayed this um, but I really like this paint that I got it's a dark nice dark gray brown paint and I wanted to use this in this uh, on this picnic basket that I thrifted and it painted up really nicely except I had to do several coats you know you could see the basket through it I should have sprayed it first and then painted over that and that way it wouldn't have been the lighter basket color but it worked out pretty good it's, it's done uh, but it took me like three coats to really get in there really good and I used different paint brushes and it was kind of crazy but I have the, a few little pieces left of this uh, striped material that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And this is a gray-brown color stripe. So I thought this would look really good with this paint. And I wanted to make it look like there was a, a liner inside, which I'm going to put one in, but not like a sewed one. I'm just going to glue it because it's a lot easier for me. But I ripped down my pieces so that I could glue them around the outs around the inside edge and flip it onto the outside so that it looked like it was coming over the edge and then I cut some strips to uh, make little ties around the handles I thought that would look really nice I attached them with glue and just tucked them in there so it looked like they were coming out from underneath the material and just finished gluing that up so that that would stay down and then tied those sides and I did the same on the other side so that it would just look like it was all tied on and that it was all together. I then went on to line the inside as well and I just had little pieces, well I had smaller pieces that I had to kind of kind of piece together so I added that to the inside of the basket. I took some of my cardboard that I had and I cut that down. I put my basket on top and went around with a pen just kind of did a little template so that I could make a bottom for my basket. So if we wanted to set anything in there like for decorations or whatnot that they could, would stand in there really nice and it finishes off the inside because I was low on material, so this worked really well. got this nice picture frame from the Goodwill recently so we're going to flip this and make this into a pretty piece of home decor to put on uh, your wall some beautiful wall decor so what I'm gonna do is just scuff up the wood a little bit because it is a little shiny and I want it the paint to be able to stick and then I'll clean it up and I'll get some paint on this and I'll show you what color I'm gonna use
Okay, we're gonna let that dry for a minute and just make sure that it's not wet. And I'm just gonna show you the paint that I'm gonna use. This is Bare Color Sample. I just got this from Home Depot. Uh, I ordered it. They're usually $5.99 or $5.98 or something like that for a sample size. These were $1.98 or something like that, or 99 for this little sample size, which is a great size. I'd say it's probably eight ounce. Yeah, it's an eight ounce size. This is the color English Custard. And so I'm gonna start with this color and see what I think, but this is flat, bare, interior, exterior paint and primer. So I shouldn't have to do any more than just like what I did was scuff this up. But here is the color. Look at that. Now it's gonna be shocking at first, but we're gonna to tone this down like I've done before. This is a, similar to the mustard paint that I use of the, what is that kind, Fusion. Not quite as orangey yellow. This one's more of a yellow yellow. So we're gonna just start putting this on to our mirror. I'm gonna keep away from the mirrored part. We're gonna keep that a mirror if we can. So I just have a small brush and we're just gonna go on with this. I'm probably gonna need a few coats. I have a small brush because I want to be able to get down near the mirror without getting it on the mirror. If I do, it's not a big deal. I can just wipe it off or scrape it off with a razor blade. But we're going to get one coat on this guy. See what it looks like, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to have two coats on here. Now this is where one of those little um, Lazy Susans come in handy. This fits perfectly on the top and I can just spin it as I go. It makes things so much easier. Don't have to worry about it getting all over everything. Okay, so here is the first coat that I let fully dry. And then this is the second coat here. So it does a pretty good job of covering. I will probably go in with a third coat just because I can see some spots where um, the dark is coming through, which I am going to distress back and try and get some of that original, maybe not the darker stain, I mean, whatever comes through, but I'm gonna try and distress back with that, but I do want a nice coat on this so that the parts that I don't distress look really nice and covered. So I'm just gonna finish up with my second coat here, let that dry, and then we will, um, I'll have to distress it. And then I think I'm gonna use some of my Waverly antique wax to darken it and make it look a little more antique. Okay, I wasn't very careful about keeping the paint off the mirror, so I have got to scrape it, which it's scraping very easily. It's pretty much dry, I'm not gonna do I'm gonna wait a little bit. It actually dries quite fast, this paint. Okay, this part's controversial. You could leave this just the way it is. It looks great. I'm going to take some, I like my pieces distressed. I like them to look old, aged, like they've been around. Um, and so we're gonna just lightly, I don't know what this paint, this is really good paint, so we're gonna see how much it takes. Oh yeah, so that takes it down a little bit, takes it down a notch, down to the original dark. around the edges like I said of course if you don't want to distress it you don't have to all right so I'm gonna put a little on my brush I'm gonna put 
put it on the paint. Get a nice big spot here. Okay. Now let's wipe it back and see the color that we get from that. Oh yeah. That darkens that up a little bit. Look at that. See the difference there? Okay, so here's the transfer I'm gonna use. This is brand new Lover of Flowers from IOD Iron Orchid Designs. And it's a cute little transfer. I just, I had to get it when I saw it because I had this and I actually have another one that I'm going to do after this one and I just envisioned these going on there and I'm not sure which one is going to look the best. I kind of like that one. Oh, look at the daisies. This could be a beautiful daisy mirror. That's so pretty. And you can cut these up. So if I wanted to just use the daisies on here and maybe this little saying, um, or you can have this top piece. I don't know, I think this all will work. This is Scythia. So I think this all would work together in this piece. I may, that may be the one. I wasn't sure, although, ooh, I like that one too. That one looks really good with the coloring. And see, now you can see why I aged the um, frame, because these look aged. They look antique, kind of. Uh, they look like an old picture of a flower. So these are, I'm just showing you all the different ones that you could do. Um, and these are all just kind of single, single flowers that you can use along with the other ones or you can use them separately on something else. Now that one's kind of interesting. That looks really pretty with the blues and the greens and there's enough of a bit from these, um, what do you call these, leaves uh, that kind of bring out this color in, in here. Or this brings this out and this brings this out right here. There's some little little bits of it. So that would be nice too. These are forget-me-nots with a little saying of like a poem or something of forget-me-nots. So that would be really pretty. I'm really loving the daisies for some reason. And I love daisies. And for some reason, this just screams that it needs to be on here. I am going to cut this up a little bit just so that I can space it out a little bit more. So that way this one can be up a little bit further on the frame and then that can be in the middle and then this can be down here a little bit.
Okay, here's another one. This one I got at my, the free shack at my dump. So um, this is like a octagon shape. It's got some great little hangers on the back. I'll probably attach a wire so that you can just slide it down. It's already got a nice backing on it. So I'm not going to take the mirror out or ruin the back of that because it's already got the hanger, already got the backing. So what I want to do is clean this up, figure out what color I want to do. And then I think I'm going to go with these transfers again and see um, which one just strikes my fancy. I'm not even sure at this point what color I want to do. If I do a green, I could do something that would be beautiful on the other forget-me-not, um, or that would be beautiful. So I'm not really sure yet. So what I'm going to do is I got to get this cleaned up, look at my paints, and then we'll come back and talk about what colors we're going to use. Okay, so I chose my green paint from DWIL. It says wood paint, and I don't think this is wood. I think it's plastic, but it works very well. So, and I love this color. And I thought when, uh, when and if I put this on and I distress back, this brown and this kind of off-white color will look really good if it pops through the paint. So I think them together will look good. And then I think it'll go with any of those transfers. Most of those have green leaves in them and we can go with a few different colors to match. So we're gonna try it. Obviously it's just paint. So if we don't like it, if we can't find anything to match or do with it, um, we can change the color. So we're gonna start with adding probably two coats at least of this green paint. Now, this is the first coat I absolutely love the color of this paint. I love the, uh, just the shade of green. It's beautiful. I can say uh, very honestly, easily, that anything that I paint this color and put in my booth, it sells. I have done three different furniture pieces in this color, and they sell very quickly. Within, uh, I mean, my booth, a shop is only open four days a week. So within either that four days or the next four days when it's open, it all depends on when I get the piece in the shop. This color sells. I'm not really sure um, if people just love this color as much as I do, um, or it's the shape of the piece, or I, I don't really know what actually sells it to the people. I wish I was there to find out. Uh, you know, ask questions. It's like, do you just love the color or is it the actual piece itself? What is it? But um, I like, I, and then I've done smalls. My smalls always sell in this color. Um, I don't have, I don't keep much green in my booth um, because it sells so quickly. So I thought this would be a great piece to put in. And um, then uh, I think I'll need at least one more coat on here because you can see you can see through the dark spots and even some of the lighter here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do another coat on here and then we'll see what, um, if I have to do another one after that. But So this is called Cardamom Green and I got this from DWIL Company and I'll put a link down in the description. I had a discount code for this as well, um, but this was, I don't even know, maybe, Maybe last year, but it may have been the year before. I can't even remember now. But if the code still works, I'll link that down there as well, along with the link to the paint. This goes on so smooth. And you get quite a, quite a big container of it. 
32 ounces. I mean, that's, you get quite a bit. I, I think that they probably have different sizes, but anyway, I didn't think their prices were any worse than anywhere else. Of course, I haven't been on there in a little bit, so it's hard to say, but I almost say I want to, like, bowl, um, buy a, this color again so that I just have it in my stock because it, I have used it so much, it's getting down there. I mean, it's still quite a bit left. And a little bit goes a long way. Like This is two coats and it completely covers this so nicely and it levels out. You can see the brush strokes, but it levels out pretty good. So it's not so bad. Okay, we're gonna do this one opposite. We're gonna actually pick and do the middle first before I decide whether I'm going to distress or antique the frame. So, I just want to, I'm going to lay this right in the middle. I think, honestly, any of these would be perfect. And this is the right way up. I just want to make sure I have the right way up. I don't know. I think I like the forget-me-nots. It's just a lot of nice green. And there's actually another bunch of forget-me-nots on another page. So if I have room, I could put that like around the top or just use a piece of it or a couple pieces around the side. So these are really nice to use if, um, you know, if you cut them up, you can do different things with them. I want to keep this together though, I think, but I think, I think I'm going to go with the forget-me-nots. So the cool thing with these transfers is as you rub on them to get the picture to unstick from this part, it, um, you can like pull up as you go. I'm going to see if I can get it to find a place that's there we go so right there I don't know Oops, let's get it up there there we go so right there you can see it didn't stick down as long as you don't pull your paper up all the way you can get that to lay back down and just run your little your little uh, rubbing tool that they give you right over that and it lays right down You feel any resistance at all it's not stuck and you got to just keep on a rubbing there we go oh my gosh that looks so stinking beautiful i absolutely love it Okay, as you saw, I sanded, distressed my edges. I brought back some of that white to bring out some of the white in the forget-me-nots. And now I'm going to just darken the green with my antique wax. I'm going to darken the edges of the white so that it looks a little more antiqued. So I'm just taking my watered down antique wax and I'm not gonna bother to try and get close to the mirror or anything like that. I just want to do the very top best that I can, get in the grooves so that when I wipe that back, hopefully, I'm gonna use this paper towel that I've been using. We're gonna wipe it back and it's making it look nice and aged oh yeah it's bringing out the brown there's brown in the wording and the, the poem I guess is what it is And then it's bringing out the brown and the leaves. So it's bringing out different colors so it's not just the green. 
So as I'm wiping it, it's staying down in some of the cracks and crevices, which is what I want to make it look aged. Gorgeous. Love it, love it. this really nice basket it has awesome bones to it I love this flat part around here and um, it's a nice basket very sturdy very sturdy basket like there's no no messing with this thing it is a very nice basket so what I want to do is um, just take a piece of drop cloth that I have and I've already ripped it down I want to put it on the front of this basket but I'm not sure if maybe that's too big. But I have this transfer that I wanted to put on it. I thought it would look really good with the red and the brown of the basket would bring out the brown in the stem. Okay, actually I think that's gonna be good. I'm just going to maybe do right there and rip that. And I'm just gonna pull some strings out so we have a little fraying. Yeah, I think that looks cool. And then I'm gonna take this and I think I'm gonna add it down here when I get done. So I'm gonna just, I don't know why, for some reason I think that's how that needs to go. Just like that. There we go. Okay. And transfers go really well on cloth. got to really rub though. There we go. I hot glued around the outside edges so that I could glue that on top of my basket. Tried to get that lined up in the middle and make it look really nice. And that's all I did with this basket. I think that's all it needed. And I think it is a nice little touch for a display. I thrifted this picture frame for $1.50, at least that's what the tag says, and I like the shape of this. It's a rectangular shape, and sometimes you don't find those all that often out in the wild, so I thought that I would uh, pop the back off this and give this a really cool look. So I uh, had to clean it up because it was very dirty, and uh just wiped that back. I didn't bother sanding the frame because it was already scuffed and scratched up enough. I used my DWIL green paint, my cardamom green. I did two coats on the frame, letting it dry in between each coat, and that was enough coverage to make that look really good. 
So now I'm going to add some music notes to my picture that was in the frame. I'm going to cover that up fully as best that I can. Okay, so I cut out these things from the Lover of Flowers transfer book from IOD Iron Orchid Designs, and I'm going to put these on here um, somehow so that they look nice. But I wanted the words to stick out and not blend in with the picture, with the uh, music notes and the words that are on there. So I grabbed one of these cards that I got from the scrapbook shop. It's they look like this and I'll have a link down in the description for them but if you flip it over you have a totally blank side that you can work on and I think there we go I can fit that on there and I even could probably I don't know but I think I might may put it right in the middle but anyway that will make the words stand out a little bit and then I can kind of if I wanted to put it on there a little crooked and then I can have my rose on there here and then this one can come down here or however I decide to do it I haven't really decided that far yet but I think what I'm going to do is put these words on this little paper I love the lace of it I think it's beautiful so we're going to do that first. there oh that looks beautiful that looks beautiful and then you just take paper it's like it was meant to be on there i mod podged the poem down to the music notes so that it was nice and secure before i added my transfers mm -hmm. Once I got my transfers on, I took a little bit of some antique wax and went around the outside of my picture just to give it a little bit of a distressed look, an aged look. I sanded down my edges of my frame and now I'm going to add a coat of antique wax and then wipe it back to give it an aged look as well. I hope you enjoyed my projects today. Let me know down in the comments which one, if you have one, is your favorite. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And check out this next video that is on the screen. I know that you're going to love it. Have a great day.